There are two types of tables in Hive, managed and external, and we'll talk about both of them in these series. In this video will cover managed tables, and we'll look at how they behave differently or how they're stored differently, uh, depending on whether we make them in the default or our own user-defined database. So I'm going to, to that point, let's make our own database called Company. It looks very similar to what we do in SQL Server, so we go create a database, and then we give the database a name. Uh, Hive, HiveQL gives a nice little statement that we can put with it, so we can say create database if not exists, and then we can say our database name, so I'm going to say company. All right. Now, of course, you can do the same type of thing in SQL Server. It's just that it's a little more verbose. That not exist part becomes a separate statement. Okay. So we've got create database if not exists company. And then, of course, if we do our show databases command, we can see that now both exist. Okay. Let's take a look over at the warehouse to see what happened there. So in another tab, I'm doing my Hadoop FS dash LS slash user slash hive slash warehouse. Okay, by just creating that database, you can see that now in our data warehouse, we have company.db created as another directory off of warehouse. Notice you don't see anything for default. Okay, so when we create a table in the default database, you'll see what happens. Okay, let's go back to my other tab. Now, I haven't done a use statement, something like use company right so if I did use company now any query that I would be running would be relative to the company database okay I'm gonna fall back though to default so I'm gonna say use default so that I'm now in the default database okay clear the screen so now we can see what happens I'm gonna create a simple little table and I'm gonna put it in the default database okay so create table Nothing new there, but we can also tack if not exists right in line here, which is lovely. I'm going to say a product. Okay, so I've got create table if not exists product. I'm going to open up my round brackets. So uh, let me just pause the video here. And I've just moved over to Hives, um, Apache Hives Wiki for uh, some of its help. If you just scan through the data types, notice you've got some of the same players that we had in SQL Server, tiny int, small int, int, big int, floats and doubles and decimals. A little notice here, tiny int for us isn't signed. Ours goes from what, 0 to 255, 256, right? Here it's signed, so the number is smaller on the positive and negative end. We've got timestamps, dates, and intervals. Notice with the string types, we have our var chars and chars. Those are our bounded string types where we can specify an n factor to limit its size. Uh, but we don't have a var char max. String is its equivalent here in Hive. Okay, so string is an unbounded, it's a very large string type. Okay, so now that I've kind of quickly ramped up to my data types, I'm only going to make two columns. So I've opened up my round brackets for my field list, and I'll say ID space, and that'll be a big int, since I'm in a data warehouse here. And I'll make a description field after the comma, and that'll be a varchar, and we'll size that at 100, just like we would in SQL Server. Close up my round brackets semicolon and that's my create table statement done and so now I can say show tables and I can see that the default database has one table called product so let's quickly review inserting okay we can say insert into product and then we would go values and then we'd open up a round bracket and notice that in this uh, HiveQL we can do the same thing in SQL Server we can do a single insert like uh, Let's see, I'll make a large integer here with a series of nines, a comma, and then in quotes I'll say product uh, and we'll just give that product description a fake name and close it off in semicolon. We can see that when we run an insert statement, a rather long MapReduce job will run for this lowly little wee insert. I'm going to pause the video and let that take its toll. Okay, you can see that the map reduce finished and uh, we have that record in there. And of course, we wouldn't do this so much in Hadoop. We wouldn't do single inserts, would we? But of course, you can do that. Um, and also, I'll just clear the screen so that we can uh, 
a fresh look. And so we could also do an insert here, which would be more of a batch insert. So I've called up my last insert statement, and I'll, I'll do a couple more products here. And uh, I'll just do a couple here. So I'm just going to do another fake product name. And what I would do is I'd comma separate it, my values lists, you know, in round brackets. So I'll do one more product here and a string. And now we can see that I'm going to have two records being inserted. Oh, I think I have a syntax error there. And I didn't terminate my string there in that last insert. And we'll let that map reduce job and run and I'll come back. Okay, so we have a table created with three records. And we should do a select all, so select star from product just to see the end result. And we can see those three values in our manage table. Okay, so what is a manage table? We'll begin to see it in action here. But a manage table means that both its schema, which is stored in the Metastore, our case Derby, and its raw data stored in HDFS, it's all managed by Hive. Okay, so this has implications. Now, Pig and whatnot can actually access the data, but it can't, for example, uh, remove all the data. And we'll see that shortly. Okay, so this is a managed table. Should you want to see that, at any point in time, you can do a describe statement, right? So if I say describe product, I will get a summary of the data types, and you can also put comments to the fields, right? But if you do a more verbose description of product, so if I say describe format, uh, format or formatted, we'll see very straight, yeah. So it's describe formatted. product. Here we'll get a more detailed description and notice if I scroll up you'll see not only its data types and uh, field names but you'll also see for example the ownership okay and you will see the location of the raw data and look at you'll also see the table type manage okay it's a very helpful command to get a lot of information on your table. Okay, so let's see what happens with a managed table. Now keep in mind this is in the default database. So I'm going to go back over to my other tab and rerun my Hadoop FSLS on the path to the warehouse. Notice what it did. That product table got stored right off the warehouse directory. It didn't get stored in a DB uh, directory, right? So that table is right off of warehouse. And of course if we uh, go to that warehouse slash product, that's the name of my table, and that will be the name of the directory in HDFS. Notice there's the data, and you can actually use a cat command if I copy that one file. So if I was to say Hadoop FS, and then I'll go dash cat, and then the full path, so that's slash user, slash hive, slash warehouse, slash product is the table name because it's in the default database it rests right off of warehouse and then we will refer to that file and of course there we see the one product that we entered keeping in mind that the other file stored the batch so both of those inserts are in the second file okay so coming back to the idea of a managed table so a managed table is fully managed by Hive. Other, other things like pig uh, can access the data. Why? You know, because it's on HDFS, right? But notice what happens. If I was to do a drop table product, right, we would get rid of the product table. Because it's a managed table, what would happen is if I was to come back over to HDFS, and uh, let's go through and we'll do an ls command okay and so i'm going to look at everything off of user slash hive slash warehouse notice that my company.db is there that database is there but the table was completely re be removed from hdfs okay so um so with manage tables when you delete that table both the schema and the raw data 
get removed from Hadoop. Okay. This is not the case with an external table, and we'll look at that shortly. Okay. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video. We'll stop the video at this point. I'm going to pick up the idea of a managed table because I want to show you loading data. So um, that'll be in the next video where we wouldn't do a batch insert or a single insert, but we would do more of a bulk load operation. Okay, and that'll be in the next video.